Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. In this webcast, we're talking about the activity series and how we use it in chemistry. Here's what I'd like to accomplish in this webcast. I want to introduce the activity series for metals, and then talk about the activity series for halogens, and use these activity series to predict if a single replacement reaction will occur or not. So where the activity series came from is comparing the reactivity of elements. Some elements are known to be more reactive than others. For example, the metals calcium and barium can react with liquid water but magnesium does not. They have very different reactivities. So if we compare two sets of reactants, let's say we have a magnesium strip and we insert it into a solution of copper two nitrate. Well, that reaction occurs. We get magnesium nitrate in solution and we see copper metal depositing. However, if we have a strip of copper metal and we insert that into a solution of magnesium nitrate, nothing happens. There's no evidence of any chemical reaction occurring. Here's what this tells us. Magnesium can kick copper out of the compound, but copper can't kick magnesium out of the compound. Magnesium is more reactive than copper. The other thing I want to point out is just because you can write a balanced equation doesn't mean the reaction actually takes place in real life. This idea that we can compare the metals and their reactivity is really what led to the activity series. So at different times, people did a lot of those kinds of experiments and came up with relative reactivities of the metals. And that's all been summarized in the activity series. We have a version of it here. Now, no one expects you to memorize this. You'll always be given the activity series when you need to use it. The activity series summarizes a lot of reactions comparing the reactivities of metals. And the way it's set up is that our least reactive metals are down at the bottom of the table. You'll notice silver, platinum, gold, elements that we use a lot in jewelry. You don't want your jewelry reacting with your skin. And then the most reactive elements are at the top of the table. As chemistry students, the activity series is really helpful because we can use it to predict if a single replacement reaction will occur or not. Again, just because I can write a balanced equation doesn't mean it actually happens. So here's the pattern. An element can replace a less active element in a compound. So with the activity series of metals, a metal can replace a less reactive metal. In contrast, an element cannot replace a more active element in a compound. Let's explore some reactions and do some sample problems. Can iron replace magnesium and magnesium chloride. Will this reaction occur? Well, let's look at the activity series. There's magnesium, there's iron. I see that magnesium is higher in the table than iron, which means magnesium is more reactive than iron. And therefore, this reaction will not occur. Iron cannot kick magnesium out of the compound because iron is less reactive than magnesium. Let's do another problem. Can barium kick aluminum out of aluminum chloride? Let's look at the activity series. There's barium, there's aluminum. I see that barium's higher in the table, and that means barium's more reactive than aluminum. So yes, this reaction will occur. And therefore, we can write the products. Barium can kick aluminum out of the compound. I'm going to make barium chloride. Notice it's BaCl2, because barium forms a plus two ion, and chloride's a minus one ion. And then I make aluminum metal. What about this reaction? Can zinc kick aluminum out of aluminum nitrate? Aluminum is in the middle of the table, and zinc is below it this reaction will not occur. Zinc is less reactive than aluminum and nothing will happen because a metal cannot replace a more reactive element in the compound. Aluminum could kick zinc out of a compound, but zinc just can't kick aluminum out. So we had an activity series for the metals. It turns out there's an activity series for the halogens as well. It really works in the same way. The least reactive element in the series is iodine. It's at the bottom of the table. And the most reactive element is fluorine, and it's at the top of the table. And the same pattern works. You can replace a less reactive element, but not a more reactive element. So one thing you need to keep in mind is that halogen atoms are going to replace halide ions in these single replacement reactions. These are anionic single replacement reactions. Halogens are going to replace halogens. Metals would replace metals. Okay, let's go on and do some problems. Of course, we always have the activity series handy. No one expects you to remember this. Can chlorine kick fluorine out of sodium fluoride? Well, let's look at the table. Fluorine is the most reactive halogen, and chlorine is less reactive than it, and we know that because it's lower in the table. Therefore, there's no reaction. Chlorine cannot kick fluorine out of the compound. And why? Because chlorine is less reactive than fluorine. It's not that fluorine's higher in the table. Fluorine's higher in the table because it's more reactive. The elements don't know where they are in these tables. Let's do another problem. Can bromine kick iodide out of sodium iodide? Let's look at the table. Bromine is near the bottom of the table, but iodine's even lower in the table. Iodine's less reactive than bromine, which means bromine can kick iodide out. So yes, this reaction will occur, and that means we can predict the products. The bromine will take the place of the iodide. We'll make sodium bromide and iodine. And remember, iodine's a diatomic molecule, so you have to write it I2. 
Let's summarize what we learned in this webcast. We can use the activity series to predict whether or not a single replacement reaction will occur. Metals can replace less reactive metals, but not more reactive metals, and halogens can replace less reactive halogen anions in a compound. If you found this helpful, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and like the video.